Hello dear students, this is grade 11 mathematics lesson on unit 4 mathematical reasoning. On today's lesson, we focus on arguments and validity. So, after revising this lesson, you are expected to define the term argument and identify the validity of a given argument. So, let's see what an argument means. Argument is an assertion that a given set of statements, a given set of statements, P1, P2, up to Pn, we call this hypothesis or premises, yield another statement Q, we call conclusion. So, argument is, it is an assertion that gives a set of statements, yielding another statement, we call that conclusion. Here, an argument form can be it is denoted by in this form. P1, P2, up to Pn, these are premises yielding a conclusion. Or it can be written in this form. P1, P2, up to Pn, these premises yielding a conclusion Q. This is an argument form. Now, an argument form P1, P2 up to Pn, yielding a conclusion Q, these are premises, yielding a conclusion Q, is said to be valid if Q is true whenever all the premises are true. Otherwise, it is invalid. So, to test whether a given argument is valid or invalid, first you assume the premises all the premises to be true and then if you arrive at if a conclusion is true so in that case the argument becomes valid otherwise it is invalid so let's see example for this look this one here it says investigate the validity of the following argument p p plus q will be q here the conclusion is q to test or to check whether this argument is valid or not, what you do is assume all the premises are true. So, 1. P is true because it is premise. Because it's premise. One. Second, you have to also assume P plus Q to be true because you have to assume all the premises to be true. So we assume this to be true. This also, P implies Q is also it is true with the same reason. With the same reason. So, from 1 into 2, from 1 into 2, you can see that this whole statement is it is true. And P is also true here. So true implies Q gives you true. So this Q must be true. If it is false, true implies false, the result becomes false. It can't give you true. Therefore, we have found P to be true. True implies something is true, so Q must be true. Therefore, here, from 1 into 2, from 1 into 2, from 1 into 2, Q is true. Q is, Q is this true. So, what's our conclusion? Our conclusion is Q. So, we arrived that Q is true. Therefore, assuming the premises to be true, the conclusion becomes true, Therefore, this argument form is this valid. Therefore, here, therefore, P, P implies Q, P implies Q and Q, this it is valid. It is valid. Okay, by the way, alternatively, 
you can check the truth value using truth table for this statement using truth table we have two statements here p and q so we have to the power of two possible combination of true and false so here let's take truth table here we have p q and p implies q let's prepare a table for this p, p implies q and q so since we have four possible combination of true and false let's take two truths and two false here and true false true and false okay now true implies true it is true implies is it is false whenever the first statement is true and second is false otherwise it is true true implies true 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 implies false it is false and false implies true it is true and false implies false it is true now what are our premises our premise is these two the premises are p and p implies q so we assume this to be true therefore P is true and P implies Q is true. It's the first row. And the conclusion is this Q. The conclusion Q is true. Okay, let's check all possible combinations. Here, uh, is there any other possible combination where P, the premise is true? I think we don't have the other part. P implies Q is true here. P is false. P implies Q true is here. P is false. Therefore, for the premises p implies q true and p true for these premises the conclusion is it is it is the conclusion q uh, is true therefore it is valid the statement is valid so you can use a truth table by the way let's see this one investigate the validity of this argument here it says negation of p implies q q gives the conclusion p so first you assume the premises to be true one let's start from this single uh, statement q q is true because it is premise it's a premise okay now second negation of p negation of p implies q this also true with the same reason. It's a premise. Q, negation of P implies Q. Both are premise. So we assume this to be true. Now, here we know that Q is true. Negation of P implies Q also true. So what will be the value of this negation of P? If the negation of P is true, true implies true, it gives you true. It can be true. If negation of P is false, false implies true, it gives you true. So here, negation of P is, it is true or it can also be false. Therefore here, P is, negation of P is true means P is, it is false or false or true. Therefore, our conclusion is P. P is it's not true only. It can be also false. So, this statement is invalid because assuming the premises to be true, the conclusion must be exactly true. Otherwise, it's not valid. But here, the statement, the conclusion P is not exactly true. It may be also false. Because of this, this statement is invalid. Therefore, here, negation of P implies Q comma Q gives you P this is invalid invalid 
Okay, you can use table also to test whether it is valid or invalid. We have two statements, P and Q. So we have true, true, false, false here, true, false, true, false. Negation of P implies Q. Let me have negation of P here. Negation of P, it is false here. Negation of true. Negation of true is false here. Negation of false, true. Again, true here. Okay. Next, let's find negation of P implies Q. Negation of P implies Q. Negation of P implies Q. Negation of P implies Q here it is false implies true, it is true. False implies false, it is true. True implies true, it is true. But here true implies false, it is false. Okay. Now, what are our premises? Negation of P implies Q. We have one premise here. And the other one is this Q. We have another premise. So, let's check the values where both the premises are true. Here, both are true on the first row. On the second row, both are not true. On the third row, both are true here. On the other, there is no. So, we check the first and the third row. Whenever the premises are true, what's our conclusion here? Our conclusion is P. Our conclusion is this column. Whenever the premises are true, the conclusion, it is true here. Whenever the premises are true, it's not true here. Because of this, because of this row, because of this row, this statement is invalid. This statement is valid. Therefore, uh, the argument negation of P implies Q. Q gives you P is invalid. Now let's continue to the other part. Okay. Let's have this. If the rain doesn't come, then the crops are ruined and the people will starve. The crops are not ruined or the people will not starve. Therefore, the rain comes. Check the validity of this argument. Okay, to check this argument, its validity, we need to convert this into symbolic representation. So, let's put a symbol for a given statement. If the rain does not come, let's assume P is the statement if if the rain if the rain comes let's assume assume p to be the rain comes okay the crops are ruined another statement let's assume q to be the crops are ruined the crops the crops are ruined The crops are ruined. Okay, what else? We have also another third statement here. The people will starve. The people will starve. Are the people will starve? Okay, now the crops are in the same statement. The people will not starve, therefore the rain comes. So we have given a symbol for each statement there. So let's convert this into an argument form. Here the first says, if the rain does not come, the crops are ruined. If then statement, if then it is P plus Q form. 
if the rain does not come, the rain comes is P, does not come, it's a negation of P. If the rain does not come, then the crops are ruined. The crops are ruined is Q. Negation of P implies Q. The crops are ruined and the people will starve. Therefore, here the crops are ruined as this Q and, and the people will starve. The people will, will starve is R, Q and R. Okay, this is one premise. The second one, the crops are not ruined. The crops are not ruined is Q, it's negation of Q, are not. It's negation of Q or the people will not starve. The people will not starve. R is the people will starve, so the people will not starve is negation of R. So the people will not starve is this negation of R. So therefore, the rain comes. Therefore, is a conclusion. Therefore, the rain comes. The rain comes is this P. Therefore, the rain comes. Okay, this is the argument for. Now, to find it is, to test its validity, let's see this one, let's use one property, De Morgan's law, negation of, negation of P or negation of Q can be written in this form. You can take negation as a common and you convert or into end. I can write in this form. Therefore, here, let me write this in another form. This is negation of P implies Q and R. Let me write this one in this form. Negation of Q and R. Therefore, the conclusion is P. Okay, so we have this argument form. To check this validity, we assume the premise to be true. So, let's take from this one. One, negation of Q and R, negation of Q and R is this. It is true because it is premise. Because this premise. Okay, second. From this, you have this one. Q and R is this is false. Negation of Q and R true means this statement, this part is this false. Q and R is false. Okay. Second, the other premise, this one. Negation of P implies Q and R. Negation of P implies Q and R. Q and R, this also is true, with the same recent premise. Okay, so here, look, the whole this statement is it is true, but this one is false from one. Q and R is false. Q and R is false here. This one is false. So, this statement implies false gives you true. So, from this, negation of P must be false. If it is true, it doesn't satisfy this one. True implies false. So, this one is true. The whole statement is true. This part is it is false. This negation of P must be true from these two, from this one, from one and two, from one and two. Negation of P must be, I mean, must be false. False implies false gives you this one. Otherwise, it can't. So, negation of P is false from 1 and 2. So, this implies, this implies, negation of P false means P is, it is true. So, what's our conclusion? 
our conclusion here it is p so the conclusion it is p is true therefore assuming the premise true we arrived at the conclusion to be true therefore this statement is it is valid it is valid it is please students try to check the validity of this uh, argument using a truth table so let's proceed to the other part rules of inference here the first rules these rules are important to test the validity of some complex arguments so here if p is true is a premise and p implies q is true both are true so q must be true if p is true this must be true the whole statement is true so this uh, rule of inference we call this its name is mode exponents here negation of q true p implies q is true these are premises so since negation of q is true q is false q is false here so p must be false so that this proportion to be true false implies false gives you true so p must be false so it's negation p is true is a conclusion uh, is true therefore this is also valid argument this is a valid therefore here we call this it is a principle of syllogism if p implies q and q implies r then p implies r is valid so we call this a principle of syllogism by the way you can test the validity of each using truth table or uh, by formal proof form so uh, let's see this one a principle of adjection if p these are premises p true q true therefore p and q is also true it's valid this one here if p is true therefore whatever q is p or q is true it's valid we call this this principle of adjection now here principle of detachment say here if p and q is true both p and q must be truths they said we call this, this a principle of uh, detachment the other rule of inference here negation of p true negation of p is true means p is false here p is false false or q must be true this to be this statement is true therefore the conclusion is q it is true it's valid so we call this more stolen opponents okay the other one principle of equivalence if p is equivalent to q or if p by implies q if this statement true p is true if p is true q must be true so that the whole statement uh, or p by implies q is true therefore we have p true here true here the whole statement true therefore q must be true the conclusion is q here principle of conditioning if p here p is true it's a p is true at the conclusion p is true so q implies p is true whatever the value of q is if it is true true implies true gives you true if it false false implies true also gives you true so this is also valid we call this this a principle of conditioning so to summarize what we have seen today first we have seen about argument argument is this an assertion that a given set of statements p1 p2 up to pn we call this hypothesis or premise yielding another statement q we call conclusion and an argument form p1 p2 up to pn yielding q is said to be valid q is true whenever all the premises are true otherwise it is invalid therefore this is all about today's lesson please try to read examples on page 139 and to 140 and do exercise 4.1 on page 140 and exercise 4.10 on page 142 is all about today's lesson goodbye